Hi, I'm James from Camsys, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect Magic HD standalone to a Magic Q console. Magic HD comes in two formats, either as part of Magic Q, all on the same system. So Magic Q, Magic HD, same system. So that could be a dual screen system where you have Magic Q running on one screen and Magic HD on your second screen, all on the same system. Or it comes as a standalone application, as I'm going to show you here. So I'm going to run Magic HD on my laptop and I'm going to control it by my Magic Q console. You could use any Magic Q console here to control Magic HD, or indeed any console that can output DMX in the same way over ArtNet. So first off, we need to set up a new show and patch Magic HD on our console. So I'm going to go set up, new show, select yes to erase current show from memory, and I'm going to select normal live mode. I'm now going to go patch, view heads, and I'm going to select choose dim slash media. You could go to choose head and choose all the individual layers of Magic HD. By going to choose dim media, we can select Magic HD full, patch it. I'm going to say one at universe one, starting at channel one, enter. Not worried about the visualizer at this point. And you can see it's actually patched 10 fixtures on my console. What it's done is it's patched the eight layers of Magic HD, the text layer, and the output layer already for me. The next thing I need to do is now set up and connect my console to my laptop, which is going to run Magic HD. So I've got a regular bit of Cat5 cable connected to my console and the other end connected to my laptop. I'm not running through any external switches, hubs, or routers here, just straight between the two. Magic Cube consoles feature an inbuilt switch. All ports on the back of the console have the same function, all the network ports. So first off, I'm going to check the IP address of my console. Set up, view settings, network, and you can see my IP address of my console is 2.0.0.10 with a slash 8 subnet, 255.0.0.0. Going to come to my laptop, and I'm going to go to control panel. So I've just hit the start bar, typed in control panel. I'm going to go to network and internet, network and sharing center. I'm going to find my ethernet connection here. Magic Q consoles don't feature a DHCP server, so you need to set a static IP address in the same range as your console on your laptop. So I'm now going to hit Ethernet. I'm going to hit Properties. I'm going to go to Internet Protocol version 4 and hit Properties on that. And you can see the default is to obtain IP address automatically. I'm going to change this to use the following IP address and give it something that's in the same range as my console but different. So the first part must be the same. It has to be something 2 dot. The end part can change. So 2.0.0.5 for my laptop and dot 10 for my console. The subnet mask is going to be the same, 255.0.0.0. I'm now going to hit OK, close this, close there, and close that down. I'm now going to go to my start bar. I'm going to search for Magic HD. I've already installed Magic Q on my laptop. And it's worth saying at this point, Magic HD comes with the Magic Q software. It's not a separate download. If you install Magic Q, you get both the inbuilt and standalone version of Magic HD with that software. It's not something else you have to install. So I'm just going to search Magic HD for the app there and run it. And in a moment, the program will open on my laptop. And it's open full screen. So I'm going to press F11 just to minimize the window. I'm going to go to File, Settings, and I'm going to choose Protocol ArtNet and choose a universe. Now, this is talking ArtNet universes here. So if I enter Universe 0, ArtNet Universe 0, and you can choose your network adapter here as well. If you've got multiple network adapters on your console or sorry, on your laptop, this is where you can choose them. I'm going to press OK, and you can see it's updated at the top there. Now I need to go to my console. And Magic HD supports something called CITP. It supports getting thumbnails from your server onto the console so it can visually show you clips, show you physically and visually the clips, and it also gives you live previews. So it shows you what the layers and the output of your server are doing on the console if you can't actually see the output of your server. So I'm going to go to Setup, View System, View Media on the console. And Magic HD is already shown here because I already patched it on my console. Magic Q consoles can control up to 50 media servers, and you'll see them all listed in this window. I've only got the one, and I need to go to IP address, and I need to tell the console the IP address of my Magic HD 
server running on my laptop, which is 2.0.0.5. Now, if you've only got one Magic HD server sitting on your network, a little shortcut, you can press the enter key on your console and it will grab the IP address. If you have more than one Magic HD system, you need to manually enter the IP address here. I'm going to set thumbnail connection to enabled, live previews to yes. I'm now going to press the get thumbs button and you should see in the command bar here, it's now retrieving the thumbnails from that server on my console. You can see it's now grabbing thumbnails. While it's doing that, I'm going to go to setup, view DMXIO, and just verify that on universe one, where I patch my server, I'm outputting ARMnet zero, which is what I've set my Magic HD system to. So you can see universe one is enabled, set to ARMnet, set to out uni zero, like so there. So I should have connection in both directions now to my server. Looking in the command bar, it tells me it's now finished retrieving thumbnails for server one. You can control Magic HD like you would a normal fixture. So you could go to your layout one, group position color beam window, and it's just controlling attributes like a moving light. And you think of things like changing media clip, like changing gobo in a moving spot fixture. So I could go and grab it, select it, and control it as a normal fixture. But a more visual way of controlling a media server is going to the media window. And here I'm gonna start off by clearing my programmer. Along the top, you've got your live previews showing you the eight layers and the output layer on the left. The eight tiles along the top there they're your attribute control. So think of them a bit like outside of this media window, you have group position color beam changes what your encoders do. Inside the media window, you've got its own little subset of controls and selecting these eight options along here will change your encoder functions. Next, then you've got your server selection. So if you had multiple media servers, you'd select them along the top and below your layers. So I'm gonna start off by selecting layer one and locating it. Then I'm gonna to go to my output layer and locate my output layer as well. And you can see I've now got output from my server, if I full screen that, on my console there. If I go back to layer one and go to media, you can see it shows me the thumbnails of my media on the console. And you can step through your media folders using your encoders. So folder is on your Y wheel, so I can step through various folders of media on my desk. Now I haven't got much media loaded into this server, but here's some media I've got selected. And you can see, if I grab video file, that's now playing on my server. So I've got myself Magic HD networked to the console with an output running remotely. For more information on how you can program Magic HD, take a look at some of our other training videos. If you have any questions on setting up your Magic HD server with a console or Magic Q system, please contact us at support at campsys.co.uk.